Welcome to the AC 24-7 Top Story Countdown. We'll guide you through the biggest news of the day. Our focus, advocating our rights, advocating health, and advocating Earth. Here's our pick for number four. Well, this is certainly a significant moment and possibly a turning point. This expansion of BRICS was surprising to some. It was felt they could potentially go through a methodical process of inviting Jesus. countries one by one, but in the end it was six countries added, something for every one of the founding uh, BRICS members, I think. And in particular, the addition of the UAE and Saudi Arabia is important to potentially bring their financial might to the new development bank, the so-called BRICS bank, uh, to counteract the World Bank and IMF. And that's been a theme throughout this BRICS summit, counteracting Western influence. And in particular, this is a win for Chinese President Xi Jinping. This expansion is historic. It shows the BRICS determination to unite and cooperate with developing countries, which meets the international community's expectation. Now, to underline the importance of the BRICS meeting and its outcome, the Secretary General of the UN was in attendance. He had this to say about the world financial system. For multilateral institutions to remain truly universal, they must reform to reflect today's power and economic realities and not the power and economic realities of the post-Second World War. In the absence of such reform, fragmentation is inevitable. Now this loose connection of countries will have to work together to have any kind of political clout and certainly economically the talk of de-dollarization in particular by uh, President Putin of Russia is in the short term probably very optimistic but there is a sense that they could if they band together have an impact on the political stage. One small wrinkle potentially to mention, the Saudi Arabian foreign minister spoke to regional press saying they're going to look into this invite and come up with a decision at appropriate time. According to South Africa's presidents, all of these members will join in January 2024. TheAdvocateChannel.com looks at the world through the lens of equality and inclusion. Subscribe, like, and share now. AC 24-7's Top Story Countdown continues with our producer's pick for number three. This screen is stressful for many. Does the flip of the screen feel like a lot of pressure? It does, and they give you options, like 10, 15, 20, even with like Uber, Dash, yeah. and like Grubhub, all of it, like everything's tip, tip, tip. Do you think that tipping has gotten out of control? Yes. Tips are part of American culture, meant to be a thank you for good service. But today, more and more Americans are confronted with the question, would you like to add a tip? It is tricky everywhere, right? Like if you're at a coffee shop, if you're at the hairstylist, if you're coming out of a taxi, like I, I don't know the rules then and I often don't know what to tip. A recent study found that in a high number of cases, participants who were presented with a tip screen had more negative emotions to the payment experience than those that didn't and it wasn't even a real world scenario. Let's say you go to a coffee shop and all they do is just twist around the, the laptop. It's like, why am I tipping? But the small group we spoke to said more often than not, they do end up tipping. I put a dollar or two, I don't mind. Them. As, as long as like, you know, it's not a lot, I'll just, I'll just put it because I don't mind. This is, at the end of the day, I'm helping out, you know, other people. This is Provisions on State, a butcher shop. There's no table service, no cooking or serving, yet, They'll ask you if you'd like to tip. A flip screen in a butcher shop? Yes. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Yes. Um, How'd you decide to do that? These men and women have a knowledge base that they're sharing and taking care to share with the guests that come through the door. And they're not pressured to tip, but they want to because they're paying for a service provided. Does anyone have any knife work I can grab? Emily Mingrone owns the butcher shop and two restaurants in New Haven, Connecticut. At the restaurants, her front of house staff make the state's tipped minimum wage, $6.38 an hour. Tips bring them to $40 an hour on average. But the back of house staff make half that and aren't eligible for tips. This movement to get rid of the tipped minimum wage, are you for it, against it? Um, I'm against it, and I think, frankly, it's kind of clueless. 
Eight states have abolished the tipped minimum wage, which in some is as low as $2.13 an hour. The National Restaurant Association is fighting against it, calling it a top issue. That's money that's going to come out of my pocket, take away from the people that aren't getting tipped. I would need to raise my prices, which then causes pushback from the guest. But the group One Fair Wage is moving legislation and ballot measures to end the tipped minimum wage in 25 other states, including Illinois. That's how I live, is with tips. Destiny Fox works in two Chicago restaurants. She's saving up for school. She makes just above the state's tipped minimum wage, taking home $9.40 an hour. Tips add 80% to her take-home pay. Without it, it wouldn't give me the means to, um, to live, to, to, to pay my bills, to, to eat, and to do the things that I'm planning on doing, school. And I mean, it's, uh, it's everything. Like the Advocate channel on Facebook for the best way to get updates on stories that advocate for equality, justice, our rights, and more. AC 24-7 continues with today's top two pick. For those with long COVID, symptoms can linger for weeks, months, even years after first onset of the disease. So this greatly impacts patients' quality of life as well as their cognitive function. Dr. Igor Koralnik with Northwestern Medicine says at the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, swab testing was limited and blood tests weren't as advanced. So he says many people had symptoms of the disease and developed long COVID, but couldn't be tested in time to get a positive test result or got a negative result despite having the disease. We made the conscious decision to accept those patients, those patients who did not have a positive COVID diagnosis, in our clinic. In research published this week, Koralnik says blood was tested from 29 patients who were negative for COVID but showed long COVID symptoms. Researchers were looking for two proteins associated with the coronavirus that causes COVID-19, and they say 41% of those tested had evidence of exposure to that virus. It is really vindicating for those patients to know that. Those patients deserve the same care as those who test positive for COVID-19, and they also deserve to be enrolled in research studies. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Follow The Advocate channel on Twitter and Instagram to stay updated on stories that matter every day. Here's our number one story of the day. Take a look. An unprecedented moment in American history, a former president booked in a county jail. Former President Donald Trump arrived at the Fulton County Jail in Atlanta Thursday to turn himself in. Jail records show Trump was placed under arrest and booked and had his mugshot taken. If you're indicted, then we're going to treat you as though you were indicted here locally. And so we will continue to do fingerprints, mugshots, etc. The 45th president is accused of leading a conspiracy to overturn his 2020 election loss in Georgia. He faces 13 different charges, including one count of racketeering, three counts of solicitation, a violation of oath by public officer, and two counts of conspiracy to commit forgery in the first degree, among many other charges. What has taken place here is a travesty of justice. We did nothing wrong. I did nothing wrong. 18 other people are listed in the indictment, including Trump's former White House chief of staff, Mark Meadows, and former personal attorney Rudy Giuliani. This is an attack on the American people. If this could happen to me, who is probably the most prolific prosecutor, maybe in American history, and the most effective mayor for sure, it can happen to you. Trump posting a $200,000 bond, leaving the Fulton County Jail after being booked. Thanks for watching the Advocate Channel's top stories. We're on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube. Follow, like, and share, or check out advocatechannel.com for even more stories that advocate for you.